The week in the camp, how do you feel about the quarterback room, how they've handled him, what you guys have put upon him? It's fun watching those guys come along. I mean, having the summer is huge for us, just being able to spend time, work rhythm, timing, execution, checks, all that stuff right now. I mean, we're still, once you put the pads on, it's always a little bit different. Um, but I mean, right now we're, we're getting up to speed, everything's coming together, and I mean, just got to keep getting better every day. In the spring, you talked about Brock having to handle that, that room was experienced, and you guys were putting a lot on him. How sure. has he handled that as camp rolled along? Sure, well, I think, I mean, First off, starting with the summer for him, he gets to kind of repeat install and, and gain more comfort in that. You can see it. He's a lot more comfortable out there going out and, and just operating the offense. Um, but it's the same, I mean, even for, for AJ, for Tate, for even for Jordan, the guy that's done it over and over again, just those constant repetitions in the classroom, then out on the field and just continuing to polish the game. I think we're starting to see a little bit more of that. Hi, Jaheim. Threw for 4,500 yards and 45 touchdowns in this offense with these weapons around him? I mean, I, I, I got a couple of throws left in this arm, but I don't know. I mean, I know Coach Norvell is going to put me in a position to be successful, but I am a playmaker, and it's a system built for playmakers, though, so we're good. Keon, Johnny, Jaheim, yep. Trey can also catch a ball at the back. I mean, how dynamic is this offense? Just the, the weapons that we have. I mean, all the guys on the perimeter, obviously the, that running backs room. I mean, we got... I mean, we, we got weapons. So ultimately, for, for our guys, the quarterbacks, we just got to make the de right decision, own the football. And I mean, regardless of where it's going, whether it's in the backfield or to the tight ends, to the receivers, we got guys that can do, do stuff with the ball in their hands. So we just got to trust that, too. I mean, you mentioned the improved weapons, but also the improved offensive line is key to everything, right? Absolutely. I mean, having that, the improvements that we've made up front, and then just the guys that are back and everything. I mean, the understanding of the system, just the rhythm of how we call plays, the expectation, and then the situational piece of it too. Just as, as we have a more veteran group, we've been able to learn and grow through those things and then bring some of the new guys along. I got a question. Jaheim. How do you feel about Joe and Charlie's progress this, uh, this camp? Uh, I'll have to uh, evaluate that later, but I uh, appreciate that, Mr. Bell. All right, thanks. Okay. What next steps, though, I mean, could Jordan have taken after last year that you guys want him to do? And how far along has it come on that checklist for you? Sure. I mean, I think with Jordan, he's a super competitive guy that, that wants to be the best version of himself. Um, so just continue to keep that foot on, foot on the gas. And, and, I mean, coming out here and executing at a high level on a consistent basis. And that's not just making throws. That's, that's getting us into the right looks, getting us into the right play. Um, it's really the whole room in general. I mean, we talked a little bit this offseason about making the next best decision. Like, not every play call is going to be the perfect play call. Ultimately, you have the ball in your hands. you got to make the next best decision. Sometimes that's a throwaway. Sometimes that's throwing it at the back's feet. Um, just, just the ability to, to play the next play. You guys said earlier, we got playmakers all over the field. So we just got to trust that and give ourselves a chance to play another snap. AJ Duffy, um, what kind of progression have you seen in second grade in college? What kind of progression have you seen yeah, these, these last two practices, I think, are, are two of the, the better practices that AJ has had. Um, yesterday was probably his best. Um, just continue to come along, apply the meeting room to the field. Um, he's a guy that, as he continues to get the reps under his belt, just like a lot of the other guys, he's going to continue to come along. So, pleased with that progression, though, right now. Coach Mendel said it uh, at kickoff, that kind of, he told Jordan, I think, after the 2020 to spring that like he was capable of winning a Heisman, he was capable of the next. When did you think he could be that good? I think Jordan, I mean, to answer your question in short, pretty quick after, I mean, the, that 2021 season, you saw more of Jordan Travis, the person and not the player yet. Okay, so you saw the, the competitive drive that he has, the toughness that he has, um, those elite qualities, those elite characteristics that don't show up on a stat sheet or in a box score, you know, and then, the, the progressions that he made physically the following year. Um, I mean, just he, he's, he's the total package when it comes down to it. I'm super proud of Jordan, just his journey and the way that he's worked. Getting into the two-minute drills today, what do you see from the quarterback that you know, could be worked on? Or sure. You'd like? Just overall understanding of, of, of really the situation. I mean, time is your friend. I mean, when to throw the ball away, when too much time is coming off the clock, risk versus reward, and that's everything. I mean, we're starting to get into a little bit more situational football, and it, it goes back to, to what I said earlier. I mean, we got to make the, the next best decision. When the defense, some of the 11 on 11 stuff, when they throw different looks and yeah. things, is that, do your guys already know that that might be coming, or is that? I, I try and stay away from kind of scripting for success with those guys as much as possible. I'd rather have them kind of learn the stove is hot by touching it, you know. Um, 
and it's all stuff that we cover in the meetings and everything, but then it's a lot different when you're standing back there at five yards looking at 11 guys that are coming at you trying to rip your head off. Obviously not in practice with the green jerseys, but um, so then just be able to, to apply the meeting room to the field and be able to do that with a calm mind and go out and execute. Um, go ahead. How good is Jordan? I mean, J Jordan, he, he's, he's got that savvy veteran football mind to him now, you know. Um, he doesn't always fall for the bait, you know what I mean? And, and, and he understands what we're trying to accomplish with the offense. I think one of Jordan's um, greatest qu uh, qualities with, within our offense is the fact that he knows what we're trying to do schematically ourselves, what the answers are built in and then what the looks are to get us into what the checks are to get us into so I think that comfort that he has gives him confidence to go out there against different looks yeah I mean it, it's uh it reminds me of when you hear some of the the former players come back and and they talk about just the the competitive practices offense defense every single day iron sharpens iron I mean, our, our guys are going to our quarterbacks, everybody, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, tight ends, offensive line, they get better by the, with the man across them for, because of the man across them. And, I mean, what our secondary has done, it's been really impressive, and it's going to be fun to watch those guys continue to get after it. Talk about that savvy mind that Jordan has. Sure. We've got a true freshman like Brock, a freshman like AJ, and then, and then Tate kind of in the middle. As a quarterback's coach, how challenging is it to have all these sort of different, I guess, skill sets, and how has Tate kind of adopted and adapted to being that kind of right. guy? Right. I think it's it's twofold. As a coach, you got to be just aware of how you're presenting and how you're teaching things, just because each guy is at a different point in their development. But at the same point, I mean, Jordan, I've said it before, Jordan does a great job leading that room and taking ownership of just helping those other guys grow as well. Um, so I think that there are going to be those moments, too, where where Jordan, I will even just give Jordan the floor to say, hey, like explain to the room how you saw this and what your thought process was. And so some guys might not quite be there yet, but I think it gives them it gives them the chance just to, to hear a guy that's done it and done it at a high level and just how he goes about it. There's been moments where there's been miscommunication with some of the newcomers between Jordan and like um, Keon and um, J um, Jaheim, and he's gone over and talked to the players after. How much you encourage that to watch the younger players to watch that and make sure they're doing that when there's something like that happening? I think it's awesome. I mean, I, I think it, it teaches guys how to take quarterback specifically, just how to take ownership of the offense and whatever the outcome is, whether it's a good or, or bad play, whatever that is. I mean, you're, you're taking ownership. It falls on our shoulders ultimately. Um, each guy, we, we encourage them to, to, to lead in a way that's most genuine to them, and that's what Jordan does. And I mean, it's, it's great for the other guys to see that because there's, there's not one type of leadership. Each guy is a little bit different. I know it's cliche, but you know, it takes one play away, yeah. seemingly. I mean, does, does he embrace that urgency? How have you seen him kind of uh, come along? I think he does. It's just, it, it comes to the day-to-day the, the -day preparation, and, and that's also on me as a coach. That's that's me to push the urgency in the room, because it's not just Tate. Everybody else has to get better. AJ's got to continue to come along. Brock has to continue to grow. I mean, even even Dylan and Michael, you know what I mean? Those guys, they serve a purpose. They, they serve a role on this team, and it's my job to, to, to get the most out of them, so. All good? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too.